Well, this is the first time uh, where they have used blast-induced liquefaction to evaluate ground improvement uh, for residential construction. People will be talking about this for decades. Um, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. On a world scale, this is unprecedented. This is um, this has not been done anywhere else in the world to, to this level. It may not be done again, I would suspect. So here we're looking at cost-effective solutions that can be applied in a residential setting uh, so that we can come up with uh, more affordable foundation solutions for homes. And we've got some great scientific guys and we've got some great construction guys and we're trying to blend it all together. And the number of countries represented here to watch these experiments, I mean the world's watching what's just happening over the road from where I live. Today is the uh, first blast day. We've already had some preliminary trials and uh, just practicing to get the right methodology and uh, today is the first production trials. So what we're trying to do is liquefy the soil underneath the ground improvement because that's what you would have in an earthquake because we can't improve the ground all the way down. So what we're trying to do is fix that crust, right? And then the damage from the liquefaction is mitigated. We've got five ground improvement panels that we are testing. We've got the low mobility grout, rapid impact compaction, rammed aggregate piers, as well as a resin injection into the ground as four improvements. And the one in the very center has got no ground improvements in it, and that will be our control. So we can compare how well these ground improvements uh, perform relative to the unimproved ground. Okay, so the, the uh, instruments that we've actually got in the ground here, we've got uh, three types of instruments. Uh, the first is the profilometer, which is the uh, black crinkly tube that we've got here, and that measures the settlement in the ground. So after the blast, obviously the ground's going to move and we want to see uh, how much it settles. And that's done by, uh, we've got steel strips every half a metre all the way around the tube. And obviously when they move closer together or further apart, that, that gives us an idea of what's happening with settlement. The other sensors we've got in the ground are what we call PPTs, pore pressure transducers, and they're measuring the, the pore water pressure in the ground. And then the third sensor that we're going to have set up, they're looking at what the ground is doing in terms of acceleration, this way, this way, and of course side by side. So they're looking at how much the ground is moving. 26 poor pressure transducers in the ground. They're all hooked up to panels here with data cables which go into the back of this computer. We have what's called an ADQ here, basically a data acquisition system that's sort of the nerve center for the whole thing. All this has to work during the blast, from five minutes before the blast until five minutes after is, is the most critical time on a project, actually. In addition to that, we've got our, our Texan friends who are monitoring uh, what's happening in the soil. 32 different channels of instruments that we're recording. I've got another four right here. I've got three laptops that are set up that we're kind of monitoring everything in real time going at it. We're collecting a ton of great data out here. It should make a huge difference in our understanding of soil liquefaction. Three, two, one, Please hold your positions, thank you. The results of the blast, I mean, just our initial observations is things went as we expected. Um, we see sand boils that are forming. Uh, it took a few minutes, which is just like you'd see in an earthquake. It would take a while for the sand to come to the surface, but we've seen several sand boils. Uh, we also saw the central panel that was the unimproved section seems to have settled much more than the ones that were improved. Um, and we're also seeing sand boils form at a kind of in a large area. So it looks like we were able to liquefy, you know, the area underneath all the panels, which is something that we we're trying to accomplish. MVR obviously very interested in the outcome of these trials of, of this set of ground improvement methods. And the results of these trials will be able to use to refine some of the ground improvement methods that are already in the guidelines and, and more importantly add in um, some new methods into the guidelines, which will then be available to engineers who are dealing with liquefaction problems on a daily basis in Christchurch and of course this can be used not only all around New Zealand and other areas where they have similar issues but also all around the world. We've still got a lot of data to look at, I'll be a, 
a few late nights pouring over all of that data, but uh, visually we can see that uh, the ground improvements appear to be working very well. It's uh, very encouraging. Thank you.